So, I'm an architect. And I came to Boston in the uh, early 80s. Uh, I'm going to start there. I came uh, to Boston in the early 80s as a graduate student in architecture at one of the universities across the river. Uh, I had planned on moving back to New York when I finished my studies, but in a fateful decision, I decided to stay in Boston and make my career here. Now, we all know that a lot of people come to Boston, and they come here to study. They come from all over the world. They learn a lot. They enjoy their time here. Uh, and ultimately, they go back to wherever they came from or to someplace else to begin their career. I have had a lot of conversations with people who've come through Boston, and the conversation usually as they're leaving usually goes something along the lines of this. I love Boston, but, and then I hear about one reason or another why they've decided to make their career somewhere else. This is particularly true of architects and designers. And I've often wondered, what is the vision that our community can pro project? What's the identity of our city that will allow Boston to become the first choice of architects and designers that decide to come through here for school, rather than a place that's on their way to somewhere else? Now, we all know what the issues are in Boston, right? Winter, <laughs> OK? It's long. Housing is expensive. The people can be not so friendly. <laughs> and also maybe a little provincial. Um, but for many designers, the real issue is the sense that there are better opportunities somewhere else. And what's interesting to me about this set of issues, this set of slides, is that these are exactly the same issues that I had to confront when I came, when I was making the decision about whether to stay or to go. And that was many years ago, same decisions. So the questions have changed, but one thing that I can tell you all is that the city of Boston has changed a lot. And the city that we see today, which is actually growing in population, um, has new neighborhoods sprouting up, cranes everywhere. It's a, called an in-demand city. Uh, is very different than the city that I arrived in, which was actually shedding people, not just to the suburbs, but actually to entirely different regions. It was a city that was still trying to figure out what its identity would be in a post-industrial world, a city that had lost many of its leading companies and corporations, a city that was trying to reinvent itself, to figure itself out. So why did I decide to stay here? Well. As you heard, I'm originally from Geneva, Switzerland, uh, but I grew up, actually, most of my life in western Pennsylvania in a small mill town called Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and I spent a lot of time in New York in between. And when I came to Boston, it felt like an odd mashup of the best qualities of all of those places. It was a small European-style city, very aesthetic, very beautiful. It had the energy of the East Coast. Um, but most important to me, it sort of had that grit, that spirit, that uh, industrial America was trying to figure out how to reinvent itself, a city that was trying to reimagine itself. And that was actually what really interested me the most about Boston. I was fortunate my partner was, is, was and is a location scout for the Massachusetts Film Office. And we traveled all over the city. And so unlike many students who come through Boston, I had a chance to really get a sense of the entire city, the entire region, and realize that Boston was about much more than its central core, that its neighborhoods were vibrant and interesting and exciting. And there was more to the city than meets the eye. Ultimately, we settled in the South End. And I spent the next uh, 25 years building an architecture practice in the South End. Um, and doing everything, thinking globally, acting locally, but trying to do everything that we could to make what was already a great neighborhood even better. And I'm very proud of the change that the South End has gone through over those last 20 years. I was then really honored, in a sense, to be asked by the Boston Society of Architects to edit a special edition of their magazine on the subject of change and innovation. And what I decided to do with that magazine was actually pose the question back to the architectural and design community and say, our city is changing in many, many ways. Are we? 
are we taking advantage of the fact that our city is transforming and becoming innovative and doing things that, that were not necessarily, that I didn't think were necessarily happening in the design community? And in order to dig into that a little bit, I asked people like Diane Paulus of the AR ART and Jennifer Chase of Microsoft, why did they come to Boston and Cambridge to explore their careers? And they told me that Boston was a hub of networks. It was supportive. It was humanistic. And all of those questions made me go back to thinking about the design community and whether we were thinking about our community in the same way that these folks were thinking about theirs. So this brings me back to the subject of a young person who's graduating from school and trying to figure out whether Boston is the right place for them. What questions should they be asking of us and what kind of vision should this city be offering to them? And I think of it a little bit as a kind of a job interview. Uh, is this job right for me? Is this city right for me? So the first question that anybody would ask is, will Boston match my expectations? And the interesting thing about expectations are expectations are about the future. It's not about the here and now. It's about whether this city will be a good city in five years, 10 years, 15 years for me. And we're living in a very interesting moment in Boston. Boston is a city where mayors matter. And we have a new mayor. And that mayor has stated that he wants world-class design to be a central element of our identity as a city going forward. Now, I've been here 30 years, and I've never heard that before. So we should take him up on this challenge. And in fact, he's asking for our opinion. Boston is about to launch the first master planning process that it's had in 50 years, and he's crowdsourcing ideas on this uh, website, Imagine Boston 2030, and absolutely everybody in this room should go to this website and tell the mayor what you think this city should look like in 15 years. Um, you know, when I first came to Boston, Logan Airport was a gateway to LaGuardia. Uh, and today, Boston is connected to the rest of the world like it has never been. And that sets a much higher bar for the expectations and aspirations of our city. And I had a chance to ask people in my office what they think Boston, what kind of projects should inform the way the city of Boston looks in the next 15 years. And these are some of the ideas I got. This is Hamburg. Look at this image and imagine the Fort Point Channel. This is the High Line in New York. Presumably, many of you have been there. Imagine the architecture along the Greenway being as exciting as the architecture along the High Line. These are the harbor baths in Copenhagen. How about this as a vision for the Charles River Basin? This is the Olympic Sculpture Park. How about crossing our infrastructure, our highways, with civic parks instead of just private development? These are the kinds of ideas that are global in inspiration and would make Boston reach those kinds of heights. This is what our expectations should be. Second question, is Boston aligned with my personal goals and interests? Is this city for me? Well, you know, I've had a chance to travel, travel a lot all across America, and every city has its identity. And if you're looking at this image, you know where Boston is, right? We're that city on the right, the city of geeks and smart people. And you know, the idea that our city is associated with STEM industries is a great thing for Boston. We're lucky that at this point in history, we are associated with, with, with smart people who are doing research and, and being innovative. I would like to see a change in that. I would like to see the creative economy blended with the STEM economy so that our identity is not just about scientists and engineers, but it's about creative people, architects, designers, working together with scientists and engineers to create an identity for the city that is not a STEM identity, but is in fact a STEAM identity. And you'll be hearing more about STEAM in a few minutes, but I think that idea that magic is where these places, ha where these two ideas converge, should be the way that the whole world thinks about Boston. Next question, if I commit to Boston, will this city support me? Will it incubate me? Will it help me achieve my goals? 
And quite honestly, I have to tell you, this is a place where we have work to do. Boston, because of its universities and many other reasons, has long been known for incubating really talented young design, small design firms and for actually also fostering interesting design organizations like Design Museum Boston. Um, where we fall down, though, is that we don't give these firms the opportunities to really showcase their talents here in Boston or in the Boston area, and we don't really find the funding to get these other organizations off the ground. Now, I could spend a lot of time talking about all the incremental ways that I think that this should change, but I'm going to give you a big idea instead, which is that Boston should harness its talent and really focus on the big issues, big issues that are going to matter to the city. Right now, we're talking about the Olympics, but we have a much bigger issue, and that is that in 2030, 350 years of the hard work that architects and others have done is seriously under threat. And we should be br harnessing our brilliant minds and, and designers to work together to show the world how a city like Boston is going to deal with this issue. And if that sounds like a crazy idea, if this sounds like very pie in the sky, let me give you some other examples. When I did the Architecture Boston change issue, uh, it, I looked at a lot of indices that compared Boston to other cities, global indices. In the night, Frank, global index is one. It's sort of a real estate power list. And at that time, Boston was sandwiched between Milan and, and Miami. We don't often think of ourselves as being compared to cities like Milan and Miami, but there we were. And today, Milan, as we sit here, is hosting a world expo that is talking about how design can solve problems of world hunger. And Miami is catapulted to the top of the contemporary art world through the expansion of its Art Basel program. What are we doing? These are cities that have put design at the forefront of their identity. And by the way, they have both risen in this index and we have fallen. So the idea that incubation and support of our industries can happen through design leadership is the idea that I would like to present here today. And so finally, the last question is, will I be happy in 2030 that I made the decision to, to stay here and to make a career here? Well, you know, a lot of factors affect people's lives and whether they're happy that they did this or that. But I can tell you that the longer I've been here, the more that this quote by my dear friend George Thrush really resonates with me, that this is a city about ideas. And the more time I spend here, the more I appreciate that about this place. You know, the notion that the American Revolution was born here, or that really important ideas and institutions like the Boston Public Library started here, may seem like ancient history to uh, some of us in this room. But the truth is that this city is still a very revolutionary city. And I, it's even revolutionary in a personal sense. When I came here, I had no idea that I would be able to marry my husband, an idea that started here in Massachusetts, or that I would be able to work on District Hall, the first public innovation center in America, an idea that started here in City Hall in Boston, and that ha has the promise to become a new kind of public library, creating new kind of community in the future. So Boston is a city that punches above its weight, and we have to embrace its small size and accept that that is a strength. You know, my agenda, my response to the mayor's idea about 2030, about what he would like us to see, is the following. I would like to see the creative economy integrated into the science and education-based economy as an identity for this city. I would like to see those communities working together to create an international forum for solving big problems with design at its center. I would like to see this city demonstrate global leadership in design by both established and emerging firms. But I want to make the point that this next 15 years is not just about building a few good buildings. This is about changing the identity of this city and the relationship that design has to the identity of this city. Now, this is a big task, and I accept that. 
but if the creative, uh, creative community, the design community, and the rest of the community work together and harness our revolutionary spirit, this is possible. And I guess I just want to say that my observation about Boston is that it has risen to every challenge that has been presented to it, economic and in every other way. It always reinvents itself, rejuvenates itself, renews itself. And I'm glad I made the choice to come to Boston and not move back to New York. And that's why I can tell everyone here that despite the weather, I love Boston, period. Thank you.